I started as a as a switchboard operator for a television commercial company called the Peterson Company in Hollywood. And uh, being an athlete all my life, I, I didn't know quite where I was supposed to be. And when I got up here and started working in, uh, in, that, in the commercial industry, people kept telling me you'd be a great double for Doris Day. And I'd say, well, yeah, how, and what does a double do? And when I found out that the, that the double does the, the dangerous stunts and the hard things, a light went off in my head, and I said, well, maybe that's where I belong. So uh, that, I, I got started with my first commercial there by jumping over an ironing board. It's in the book, the ironing board picture for Magic Space Sizing. And I, from then on, I got with Teddy's, the only answering service in town for stunt people, uh -huh. Teddy O'Toole's. And I, I just kept going. I kept getting calls, kept working, kept working, and kept working. Every time you did a job, um, you're as good as your last job. So I kept getting calls, and my career started, and that was in the early 60s. So you started in commercials, and then what was your first... TV or film? Oh, one of the first TV things I did for Nancy Culp for the Beverly Hillbillies, I, I rode a boat for her out in the middle of Long Beach Harbor. Uh, she didn't know how to row a boat, so they got me to go do that for her. And then I did The Man from Uncle, The Girl from Uncle, all of those shows. I'd go from show to show to show, doubling the lead actress at different times. And then when I got to Universal, I doubled for Susan St. James on Macmillan and Wife. Mm -hmm. I was her regular double, then I got to double Doris Day, being That's a regular double for her on the series, Charlie's Angels series, double for Kate Jackson, Farrah Fawcett, you name it, I did them. Uh, what, what do you think some of your most dangerous stunts were that you felt? I think, I think. I mean, well, they're, like all, a, they're, they're all dangerous. You don't call them a piece of cake. When you yeah. say something's a piece of cake, yeah. that, that should put a light on in your head because those are the ones that you hear you get hurt on. Yeah. And nothing is a piece of cake. There's all risk and danger to every, even the simplest stunt. Easy to so, um, I mean, I've done high work. I've done uh, hang from helicopters. I've hung from hot air balloons. I get hit by trucks. I get do stair falls. I do. I did it all. I don't do those anymore, though. It's it's kind of silly at my age because I mean the neck has become a little brittle from all the whiplashes, so I don't. Uh, I have to pick and choose right now. But I still work. I did a Seven Up commercial last year with the. Uh, I'm on a TV screen as a cook show host, and I'm um, have a big turkey in front of me, and I say, and don't be shy with the butter. And as soon as I say that, I get hit by a football player. Full on, full side. I, I couldn't anticipate him coming. I just got hit by him. And uh, I just do pick and choose right now, the yeah. ones I want. But they're talking about movie. Everybody that sees this is say, oh, movie, 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 we need to know more. And I said, yes, we agree. And they're talking, hopefully, Charlize Theron. Saying, Charlize Theron would be a great, great person to play you. you know, so. Any actress with athletic ability would be good. But we what? hope it'll go to movie. Are there any yeah. stunts that you felt when some you first sort of heard about it, you thought, oh God, agency. I don't want that. This is, this is going to be tough or something. Is something that stands out that might have been. Well, I've, always, I've just worked with all the best, from Hal Needham to, to all most of the men in the association and Unlimited I've worked for. And sure, you go on those jobs and. And, and they say, well, well like Hal Needham called me on a job to go to Michigan to do a, a transfer from a speedboat to an airplane pontoon. And that was tricky because you only had one take. <laughs> and uh, we had to redo it, but uh, we didn't go in the drink. It was just that there weren't enough cameras and Hal got angry with them and say, where's the other camera angle? And it didn't look like we did anything. But here we've got this boat. And plane going like this, back and forth, back and forth, trying to jockey into position and for us to make that transfer on choppy water. And the plane has to be going 80, 88, 90 miles an hour, so the boat's got to be going that fast. And these were local hires, so they don't know, they don't know about stunts, but Hal got it out of them, and we did it. And you have to try to keep yourself in the best shape possible. You can't be hung out on drugs and stuff because that's where in the 70s a lot of those injuries came from. These guys were high, higher than kites doing stunts. And that's the way to do it. 
you know you just can't you can't let that element come into you you're an athlete and you've yeah. got to She's keep you, this is all you've got your body and your brain yeah and if you don't keep it in good condition you're going to get you're going to hurt somebody or you're going to get hurt
as our special guest, we have someone who started as a telephone operator and a salesperson in fashion. You may not recognize her because you see along the way, she became a stunt woman. She has over 400 credits to her name. She has doubled major movie star, 63 in fact, from Doris Day to Eva Gardner to Farrah Fawcett. She then became a stunt coordinator on Charlie's Angel. Her name is Julianne Johnson. Hello, Julie. Hello, Lillian. How are you today? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think you would ever be in the movies? Yes and no, but when I was growing up, um, when I was seven, eight years old, Esther Williams was my idol because she was a swimmer, and I was a swimmer. I was a, an athlete. My father was a coach. My grandfather's in the Baseball Hall of Fame, so I grew up with all of that, but I never thought for one minute that that, that would ever, a dream, in a sense, would ever be realized, but for some reason, I got placed, and here I am. Are you going to write a book about stunt women? Have you done any research on this? Oh, yes. I'm, I, I started years ago um, collecting everything that I could and learning everything that I could uh, about this part of the industry. And I find that it, it, there's a story that needs to be told about the stunt women because it's a very, very dangerous, exacting art that we do. There's not a stunt that a woman can't do. Yeah, sometimes we're suppressed from doing them, but that will change. But the, it's, there's a lot of sadness, there's a lot of happiness, and there's a lot of injuries, and there's death involved in our end of the business. It's a reality. And you think it should be written up? And I think that the true story of what the, the stunt women have suffered and struggled with over the last 25 years is a very important to the motion picture history. Are you ever scared? Sure, <laughs> sure. The fear you, you you let you have to let the fear work for you because uh, you, I mean if it, you're not honest if if you don't say that there's a little bit of fear. There's so many wonderful crafts in our industry to get into that um, stunts would be the last one I would suggest. But there are people that don't want to do anything else, and I understand that because that's what I've done for almost 30 years so it's hard for me not to tell people not to but you have to get have the basics with being an athlete etc um, and I think that self-esteem is very very important and I think that's what my father taught me quite a lot about is, is to f uh, to have a good self-esteem because if you good, do good deeds you do good things without asking for anything in return you feel good Therefore, you're open and your scope is open to, to uh, do many, many things. And this industry is, as I said, is full of many, many avenues. And uh, many, many doors will open if you knock. Now Yes, when Kathleen Nolan became the first uh, woman president of the Screen Actors Guild, we finally thought, boy, now we have an ally, somebody that can, we can talk to, because everybody else just sort of shoot us away. We, Go away, little girl, kind of thing. And keep your mouth shut. So we went and talked to her, and she was so helpful to, uh, and Norma Conley, who's also in the book, um, that they were the two strongest women ever there at the at the Screen Actors Guild. There's no, they were called, uh, oh dear, I can't forget, I think of the name now, the two. Uh, anyway, they, they were the two most powerful women at that time in the Women's Committee at the Screen Actors Guild, and they made big changes for, for the women. They helped us with the discrimination. They helped us with getting the wigs off the men uh, blatantly. Uh, we didn't. We just wanted some fairness. We wanted some fairness in the nondescript work. Mm -hmm. If you're going to hire, if you got five nondescript spots, let two of them be a woman. You got three men, two women. 
usually it's all they'll just hire their buddies, the buddy system, and for nondescript work. Um, so and then the harassment, uh, the intimidation. We just laid it all out to her and said, "We can we get some changes, please? This is not right." And um, they were both so instrumental in in helping us. But the few of us that spoke up, of course. Uh, were the ones that ended up on the bench because uh, that's why the stunt women of today very few there's only a couple of them that will that can back me or, or, or say anything because it doesn't matter to them anymore but um, it's basically if, if they throw any support to me at all uh, they will find themselves without work because the total control now under hiring is, is through the stunt man stunt coordinator so if you're not in their little loop, you're not going to work. And if you even mention my name, I think at this point, you won't work. So that's what's sad. You know, here I, I worked with all those guys over the years, had good rapport. But the minute I got hurt on Charlie's Angels, and it was because of drugs, and uh, I, I said, I've got to say something. So I it wasn't drugs that you were involved with. No, it was, it, it, we, involved. For, that's how we got hurt. Yeah. We got injured really bad, uh, Jeannie Coulter and myself on Charlie's Angels, because he used cocaine just prior to the job, prior to the car, car that we're supposed to bail out of. It's in the book. The story's in the book. But um, I told my superior very quietly about it. I said, I don't want that stuff around next season. There was one more season to go on Angels. And I said, keep that stuff away. I don't want any part of it. This is what happened. And I said, the cars that we're driving have become buckets of bolts. Half the time we don't have seat belts. The shocks are bad. The brakes are bad. And you're expecting us to do these great things with slides and stuff. And we're going to kill somebody. So the transportation guy I had a, 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 a talk with at the, the last show of the, last four, of the fourth season because we had such problems with the cars. And I said... Yeah. I said, you know, we got to have belts and brakes on these cars, and they've got to be fixed. And he says, well, you know, belts and brakes are expensive. And I looked at him. I went up in the air, spun around, came back down. I said, let's go talk to Aaron right now about how important belts and brakes are, or how expensive belts and brakes are compared to a life. It's also state law. Uh, well, uh, Hello. <laughs> but, but it was, again, go away, little girl. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Well, I got tired of that. And I said, I've been in this business too long, and uh, I'm going to just lay it all out there, and uh, so fine. And I kind of like my position of being alone here, because then I can say what I want. I don't hurt anybody. But at least I can say this is the way it was, and I hope it will change very soon down the road, as soon as the women can be strong enough in a group and not fight each other, but be strong as a unit and stand up and say, Okay, stuntmen, this is our problems. Can you correct them, please? That's all. Yeah. Just a little help. Don't blacklist the girls that are, you know, that, that have something to say.